Little Boxes Part 5 and this time round we have Baby 8 Sequencer Baby 8 Sequencer, it's a, an 8 step sequencer, hence Baby 8 it's a common design, um, again widely available on the on, on the web and even available in kit form if you don't want to go through all the hassle of laying it all out for yourself. Um, I'll put the links in the description again. But so far, what we've built, we've got voltage controlled oscillator. Um, I got a, a low frequency oscillator, um, which allows me to modulate the voltage control oscillator to make a slightly more interesting sound. We've got a Vactral VCA or VCV as I called it. Um, and we can use a low frequency oscillator to trigger the VCA, which will give a more punchy output. But if I'm going to get creative, I really need to be able to inject a range of control voltages into my VCO, which will then give a range of tones on the output. Vaguely musical. So, I looked around and Baby 8 was the obvious solution to this and again like I said there's lots on lots of designs out there on the web so set about building it. So what what do you need to build a sequencer? Well let's have a quick look at this one. The main sections really are eight yellow knobs there. Each knob controls the control voltage that's output at each step of the sequence. The green knob at the side of those is a rate knob. So in order to fire out a sequence, you need to inject it with a clock signal. So the green knob controls the speed of the clock signal. And then the other bits and bobs on the end are various outputs. Because of the complexity of this, I'm not gonna kind of sit here with holding the box up and talking through the layout and the outputs and what they do. I'll do that on the bench. Um, when we have a look at the outside we'll have a look at the inside and then we'll fire it up and, uh, and find out just what kind of fun you can have with a sequencer. So let's go to the bench and have a look at the Baby 8 in a bit more detail. Okay we'll start with the controls on the outside of the box. As I said earlier the yellow knobs got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight steps are on the sequencer. Each knob will control the contr the level of control voltage that is output at that step. So it, it basically it's continuously variable. It's it's not stepped or anything, and it's not tuned like on commercial sequencers. You can get uh, the ones I've got here. Well, in fact. Uh, calibrate the knobs to, to step in um, either chromatic scale, major scale, minor scale, Dorian, whatever. This it's just a continuously variable voltage. The little LEDs tell me which step the sequence is on. So as it steps from each one that will light up. The green knob is the speed of the clock which also, so that's kind of the, the clock pulse is the thing that steps the sequence through. We've got a power on off switch here. Um, the, there's a green LED which gives me a, an indication of the speed that the clock's operating at. Um, and there's control voltage out. Now, on the original design I built, that was it. That was all the controls I had in there. One of the things I wanted to do was to reset the sequence to one at any point in time. So the red button there was something I added as a, an extra to the original design which just gives me a reset function. The next thing I wanted to do, I wanted to see if I could trigger this with my drum machine. I've got a really ancient analog drum machine, very very crude, so it's very suited for uh, working with boxes like this. So I wired up an input for an external clock signal which bypasses the 555 clock and feeds a clock pulse into the chip. Well, 
talk about the chips in a moment when we get inside the box but it feeds the clock pulse into the chip that controls the steps on the sequencer and then finally as I started to kind of uh, build more and more units and want to actually start and uh, have more control over the sound that I was producing and, and how it was produced I found it useful to have a gate output. Now the difference between control voltage and gate. Control voltage is a variable voltage between, well on this system it's between 0 and something like about 8.5 roughly. So the voltage, I can set it at anywhere between those. A gate voltage is simply a pulse of volts. I'm not quite sure what it what it actually given out. I've not actually measured that, but it's it's not a variable voltage. It's a pulse, so it's like having firing out a clock pulse. Okay, so that that's kind of what's what's on the outside of the box. Um, so we'll have a look at what's on the inside of the box. I actually built this box upside down. This is a craft box that has a fancy pattern on the top normally, but I made the top the bottom because. You can see when I get inside, it all starts to get a little bit full. So, the main circuit board is this beast here. So let's see if we can kind of bring that more close to the camera. And I don't know whether you can see that there are two chips. There's a, a small, my fingers are in the way. There's a small chip down the bottom of the board that's the 555 counter. Um, we encountered those before when we uh, did the Atari Punk console. The bigger chip there, that is a 4017 decade counter. Now, decade, yes, stands for 10, but this is an 8 step sequencer. You could actually get 10 steps out of this, but for musical purposes, we tend to break things up into groups of four for four four time which is what most of the uh, uh, popular music you listen to is, is recorded in. Um, so I've broken it down up to eight which gives me two banks of four and I just reset the chip once it gets to that position. You could if you really wanted to have a second chip and do a 16 step sequencer you could also get more complicated and with uh, with two chips you could have a 12-step which would give you the option of doing things in, in 3, 4, 6, 8 time. So you, you can kind of modify this as, as you like. I wanted just to kind of stick with let's just have a straightforward 8-step sequencer. So once again you can see it's a fairly small circuit board and very few components on that circuit board other than the two chips. Most of the wiring looks really really scary because on the other side on this bit here I've got what is basically a, a, a connector board, a breakout board which has got a series of resistors on it. It's wired via the LEDs to the potentiometers that control the control voltage. So it was just really a convenient way of getting that bit of the circuit into the box and helping me sort out what is essentially a rat's nest of, of wiring. What else are we going to hit? Of course it all runs from a single 9 volt battery as with all my little boxes apart from the passive ones. This tiny circuit here, which has got one transistor on it and a couple of resistors, three resistors actually, what that actually does, that is the uh, circuit modification that provides the gate output from the, uh, from the clock. And then the rest of it is just switches and sockets for all the various things. This little thing on, on the end here um, I did start to put an external 9 volt supply input to it um, but again it was one of those modifications that I never really got round to finishing um, so 
at the moment it still all runs from the 9 volt battery. As I say, I will put links in the description for all of these circuits so that if you want to have a go at building it, don't be put off by what looks like a, this, this craziness of, of wires going everywhere. If you work methodically and systematically along the unit, it's actually just a case of being patient and wiring the next one in line into the system. Okay, so that's what's inside it and the controls on the outside. So, let's now wire it up to some of our other little boxes and see what it can do. The arrangement I've got here is the baby eight I've just been talking about. Over here I've got the Avalanche oscillator, triple oscillator, the drone. Uh, which we've used in other demonstrations. We'll come to this in, in a moment, but in the middle we've got um, our VCV LFO box from the last video that I made. So, as a reminder, what does the Avalanche drone sound like? There it is, Avalanche drone, droning on. Okay, so if I now take CV out on the Baby 8, plug it into CV1 on my Avalanche drone, and now power up the So I don't know whether see that's a clock rate, right? and you can see the red LEDs telling you which step of the sequence we're playing. that one I can change the tone reset button clock speed So that's sequencer firing out a series of control voltages at a rate set by the clock speed. Okay. What about the gate output? What can we use that for? Well, as an example, if I take the gate out on the sequencer and plug it into the CV input of the VCV you should be able to see now that the clock on there is also clocking the VCV so we take the output from the amp put into the output on the VCV, take the output from the VCO and plug it into the VCV, so what we've got now, the hard pulse from the gate 
he's triggering the VCV, so you're going to bump, 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 bump. And then the CV out is changing the tone of the note on that beat. We've lost the beat because what's happening there is it's so rapid that you're not you're not hearing that that attack from the gate pulse on going through the VCV. Now we're picking up the attack pulse, so we've got more staccato output. If you like. want to make things even more interesting. The other half of Little Box 4 was the LFO. Let's plug the LFO into one of the other oscillators on the Avalanche drone. Of course it's completely out of time with the sequencer. close to a modular system here that's actually playing something that's all right it's not going to win win any grammys or anything like that but yeah as electronic music goes experimental electronic music don't get much more experimental than this and yeah i built all these so can't be that difficult. Why don't you try it? Go on. Have a go. So that's the Baby 8 sequencer. We're now starting to get somewhere that's, that's borderline musical output. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's not a standard. So you, yeah, it's limited. But you can do some really useful things with it and you can even plug it into commercial synths which will be the subject of the next Little Boxes video so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share and come back for more <laughs>